We're good. All right. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. So today we're here to talk about OpenStack Searchlight. This is a project that's had its first release here in the Liberty Cycle, and we'll be continuing it on, obviously, in the Mitaka Cycle. So I'm Travis Tripp. Uh, with me, I have Steve McClellan and Lakshmi Sampath. So let's talk a, a little bit about what Searchlight is. So have you ever actually tried to find everything you've recently created or updated in your cloud? So let's say you're looking for a specific server or maybe an image or, or just anything. Um, or maybe you wanted to find something in your cloud that has, say, a certain keyword. I want to find everything that has the word uh, Mitaka in it, for example. Or misspelled that word while you're typing. Because if you're anything like me, you probably can't type very well and you, you misspell a lot of things and then you don't get the search results you necessarily want. And have you ever actually wanted a UI for OpenStack that could prompt you with the suggestions for search to help you find what you're looking for rather than you having to know everything before you even get started? And then with OpenStack, you actually couldn't do it because a lot of the APIs are really inconsistent. They're inconsistent amongst themselves about what you can search on in different fields, whether you can do wild carding. And then if you look across your different services, they're different even across them. So maybe I can use a wild card in a certain field in Nova, but I can't do that in Glance, for example. And they usually don't even let you search on every field. So if you want to do a full text search on the description field for, say, some of your images, you're not going to be able to do that. It, it doesn't work because of denial of service. Uh, concerns with the, the actual database behind it. Um, and then if you want to find your, your resources across all your types, you actually have to search every single service individually. You're going to have to go in there and say hit, hit Nova. You're going to have to go and say hit Glance. You're going to go have to hit them all individually and then aggregate the results on your, your side of the equation. And they're often slow. And if you want to get a change into them, it's actually very difficult to get that change in. It can sometimes take multiple cycles, and sometimes you can't get it done at all. Which, for me, that actually kind of makes me want to bang my head on the, on the brick wall and get kind of upset. But that's why we came up with Searchlight. So our mission is actually to provide advanced, extensible, and scalable indexing and search across your multi-tenant cloud resources. Um, and what we're doing is we're actually bringing the full power of Elasticsearch to all of OpenStack. And it's not just an admin-only service. This is actually for all users. So um, this means we're taking account the RBAC concerns. So if you go searching for something, you're going to see the things that you're allowed to see, not just the things that uh, are not across your cloud. So what this is going to do, or what it does do, is it's giving a consistent search API across all of your OpenStack resources. Um, you're getting full text search on any OpenStack resource, search term discovery, meaning it actually can tell you here's what you can search for, auto completion, and then one of my favorites is fuzzy search. So mistyping something and you put in the wrong letters or something else, you'll still get results according to what you're looking for. Um, and then we can get into some more interesting aspects such as geospatial search, other things. So if you put in say, uh, some latitude, longitudinal coordinates. You can do searches, things like that. So we actually want to take a peek. So what I'm going to show here is the Searchlight Horizon panel. That uh, There's a patch up for it. It works with Liberty. Uh, we're gonna, we'll create a, an offshoot of that specific for Liberty, but we're going to continue developing it out in, in Mitaka. And we're going to start off with taking a look. This is existing Nova instances table. Um, in Horizon. And you see you have various instances out here with different names and things. And if you want to go and search, you do have some fields you can actually search on. You have flavors, you have names. And if you go out there and I type demo, you're going to get some results back. And this is going against the Nova API. This is a standard Nova API it's using. Uh, and you can see we have things like demo Mitaka or demo Liberty. And if I want to limit that down and start adding some more advanced wildcarding, into it. So we'll say a demo star, me talk a star, and send off a filter request. It doesn't actually give us results. And I'm not sure why, because the, the Nova API actually is supposed to support some 
uh, wild carding on those kind of fields. But we didn't get a result. We don't know why. If we go and look for, I want a particular instance in a particular status. You know, I'll have to take a guess about what's even in my database, what the possible ones are. Maybe it's, I'm looking for stopped ones. That didn't give me anything. Shut down. Uh, okay, actually, turns out it's shut off. And let's see if we get results now. And you're going to get your results. And so I had to actually do a full search against the Nova API to figure out what I'm looking for. Uh, we go over look at images, and you're going to see now I'm going to uh, have some other filter options. Again, this is going against the regular glance API. I do a demo search. No results. I try to do demo star. Again, no results. So you have inconsistent results based off your different APIs. And it's kind of frustrating. So even though I have a couple of options to search on, it's actually kind of confusing. So here we're going to look at the Searchlight panel, which uh, we've started. And the first thing, uh, this is going against the Searchlight API. And the first thing you're going to notice is we're going to cross resource search results. So I've got DNS records. I've got images. Uh, I've got servers in there. And if we go and take a look, the full data that you might expect coming out of the Nova API is, is available to you. It's not just a, a subset of it. We go look at images again. All the common fields you might expect, they're coming out of the, the Searchlight API. And again, here we are looking at the DNS records that, that came out. So now if we want to do that same, very same search, we're going to search for demo. We're going to do a demo start. There we go. Near instantaneous results across your different resources, across your whole cloud, um, and your different types. And if you want to do some wildcard type searching, so demo star Mitaka, type it in. There's your results. Um, very consistent. You're not faced with that question of if I'm on a certain API or a certain kind of server, what I'm going to get. And we can continue to, to limit it down. So then I say, oh, well, I actually only want to search images. Well, that's actually very simple. We simply say, well, just search images and narrow it down very simply, very easily, very quickly. It's actually quite a, quite a powerful UI. And now here's one of the cooler parts. We have the ability to just easily limit things on different things. So let's find everything that was updated, say, at a certain time range, the past day. Just click that, and that's giving us results back if everything's been updated in a certain time range, whether your, your servers, images, or whatever. Now we can do discovery of the different terms that you can search on. So let's, let's limit this to servers. So now we're down to servers. Just have those. And now, actually, the Searchlight API is now dynamically returning the different facets that you can search on. So it's listing them out there for you. And if you click on it, it's going to give you the options within there. So it's saying you actually have 12 servers that have an availability zone of Japan. Click on that, grab it, bring it down. You see it's now limited down to 12 items. And we can keep on building that out. So we'll just keep on doing that. And you'll see additional facets being dynamically discovered and shown with the exact options that you have. So here, we'll maybe look at security groups. There you can see how many security groups. And these facets and options, again, are being limited according to the project that you're logged into. So this is not just across your cloud. This is like, I'm logged into my demo project. These are the actual values and choices I can make from within that project. Um, so you can see it just keeps narrowing it. Here's your various networks that are available. And you can keep pulling it down until you get your actual final results. It's a very simple and easy to use. It takes all the guesswork that you might have when you're using your classic search APIs on your various services. And it's consistent. So we go over to images, and you'll see we're going to have the same thing. Uh, your facets dynamically discovered, as well as their various options. So here you can see I have, here's uh, images that have, there's one of them that has an AKI format. So then beyond the basic discovery of those, we also have uh, take advantage of the ability to use the fuzzy search. So here I'm going to do type in my name field. Instead of open stack, I do open stuck, put the U in there. And you see, it actually still finds your results. So not only are you getting the, the nice search capabilities, you're, you're being able to handle the fact that for people like me who can't type, it'll still find your search results for you. So like here's the Fedora. Instead of Fedora, I transpose some characters and I get Fedroa. And you'll see it, it still finds my images that are Fedora. 
So it's a very powerful search that you really couldn't expect every single API in OpenStack to be able to implement and handle on its own. And instead, we're getting this consistent result. And now finally, if you really want to get powerful, the query language support, um, this is now doing full text search. I said database, and you'll see it finds everything tagged with this database. I got Oracle in here and Postgres. And if I want to say, now let's limit this to uh, open source, it's taking advantage of the tags. And you'll see it's now brought about more results. And you'll see, well, this is interesting. I got database, but why am I seeing Nginx and Apache? Well, that's because our qu the query language support is actually very complex. You can do anding and oring. You can do grouping. So here I go ahead and let's make that an and query instead. And now we've limited it down to just, just your simple search results with that and. And then let's get a little bit more fun and say, I want to actually do some actual range queries and some, some, some faceting on a specific field. So I say, now find me everything that has a minimum RAM that's less than 2048. And just like that, it's popping those up there. Um, jumping down to 1024, we can go to 512. Or even if you want to search on a specific range, not just even, I want everything with less than, we can go to a specific range and say, give me everything, say, from 1024 to uh, 2048. And you get your instant, near instantaneous results. <coughs> and when we dig into that, you're going to see that it's, it's really going down there, looking at the real, da the real field on those images and giving you that query ability. So there you go, MinRAM is it's between that range. So that's the, the UI that we're creating for Horizon. It's going to give it a cross-resource cross searching. Um, and you can try it out with Liberty. It's actually available up there as a patch you can pull down. Um, but let's take a little bit peek on the inside. We did a little bit of performance testing with it. And when we were doing just four compute hosts, 250 instances, so nothing huge, but a reasonable size you know, sample set. Uh, wildcard search versus list all of Nova versus Searchlight, you actually are seeing anywhere from 4 to 8x performance improvement in your search request. So it actually works as an effective caching layer as well. So let's talk a little bit about how does this actually work then. So down here on your bottom right, you're going to see your cloud services. Uh, say Nova, Glance, Designate. And what happens is you index those up into Searchlight via a set of plugins. Uh, so we have a plugin, say, for Nova servers. And they can be indexed on demand. So I can just simply say, go and index all my servers. And it'll go index those into Searchlight, which actually is fitting that into Elasticsearch. And we also consume notifications. So if you get your incremental updates, we're going to be pulling in your incremental updates as they happen. So when you're doing your listing and querying requests, you go against Searchlight. You know, you can do my querying, do my searching. But if you want to do an action request, I could go, hey, Nova, create my server. And Nova's going to create the server, and it's going to emit a notification event. That notification event gets consumed by Searchlight, which will then index in that into Elasticsearch, making it available and up to date. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth on this now. And I'm going to turn it over to Steve McClellan to talk through that. Thank you, Travis. Um, yeah, as, uh, as Travis mentioned, I'm going to go a little bit into more detail um, some of the, the innards of Searchlight. Um, in particular, I'm going to talk about, um, first of all, how data gets into uh, Searchlight and Elasticsearch, uh, and also the, a bit more on the query language that you can use to, to get results out of it. Um, as Travis mentioned, there's, there's two ways that we can get data in, and we call this indexing, um, which is a term we've borrowed from Elasticsearch. Um, we have the on-demand indexing, um, which you might use to initially set up Searchlight or um, when you initially set up your cloud. And then we have notification-based indexing uh, while the cloud's running. Um, I'm also going to give a brief demo. I was dissuaded from doing it live um, for, for reasons we all understand. Um, and with me, you get console windows, not, not flashy web interfaces. Um, the top window here um, is running a, a search every second against Searchlight, asking for all Nova servers that are indexed at the moment. Um, right now, there's, there's nothing indexed, um, although uh, I can run a, a Nova list command, um, and I'll get a list of, uh, of the servers that are running. This is just a small dev stack instance, so there, there's not a lot of, uh, 
not a lot going on, um, but enough to show what we're talking about. Um, so if I were to install Searchlight and, and get it up and running with this existing cloud, um, I'd use the, uh, the management command that we get with Searchlight. Um, one of the commands it provides uh, is uh, to synchronize the initial index. Um, when I run that, um, Searchlight looks at its config files. We, uh, as Travis mentioned, we have a plugin system. Um, Searchlight goes off and looks at those uh, those registered plugins, um, lists out what it what it knows about and the Elasticsearch indices that they're configured against. Um, and it's gonna it's gonna ask me if I really want to do this um, because it's gonna delete existing data so that we don't get left with stale data. So this is a, a fresh install. Um, there is an option to disable this if you know that you just want to update existing indexed resources. Uh, I'm actually going to say no to this because I just want to show Nova instances for the, the sake of this demo. Um, so I'm going to hit no here. Um, we have a type parameter. Um, I'm going to pass it uh, OS Nova server, which is the canonical OpenStack name for servers. Um, once I run this, uh, Searchlight's going to go off to Nova and list all of the running instances in the cloud. Um, it's got administrative credentials, so it's able to get everything. Uh, in this instance, there's so few that it'll do it in one pass, but if you've got a big cloud, it'll page through the results. Um, this is the same process for, for any resource type. Um, it differs slightly based on, on what resource, uh, but it's essentially the same process. The window at the top, uh, as I said, is, is running a search. Um, it's, uh, it's set to highlight changes in between searches so it's running every second and if something changes on that screen from the previous second we'll see that highlighted in gray just uh, just to show what's happening so I'm gonna set this off um, we'll see some log output from the uh, the management process um, and then uh, the search results will come in at the top we see those highlighted as I said so it all happens pretty quick um, search results start coming back uh, almost instantly so that's how we do the initial indexing of a fresh cloud or of a fresh Searchlight install. Um, as Travis mentioned, we also have uh, notification-based uh, indexing. So I'm going to um, boot up a Nova instance um, with a, a little Cirrus image, um, and I'm going to call it High OpenStack. Uh, when I run this, um, Nova, the Nova API is going to send some notifications saying that it's been asked to create a new instance, um, and as the scheduler also picks that up, it's going to send some notifications too. So I'm going to run that now. Um, we'll see a couple of updates to the search results. The first one will be that we get a server in the build state. And we see that at the top there. And a few seconds later, the, uh, the scheduler is going to um, create that server, and it goes to the, uh, the active state. So that new server has now been indexed by Searchlight. Um, and I can, I've got a little script that runs a search against Searchlight with the name of the server in the bottom window. Um, just so you can see what the, what the index data looks like. It's pretty similar to what we get back from the Nova API, so if you've already got systems that are used to consuming that data, it's going to look very similar. It's a JSON document containing all the information we can get out of the Nova API. Uh, as I mentioned, um, update operations, they're also, uh, they also send out notifications, so I can rename my server. Um, I'll call it uh, HiMitaka. And we'll get an, another notification from the Nova API that that's happened. We see the results change up there. Um, finally, I'm going to tidy up after myself and, and delete this server. Um, the scheduler, again, will send a notification once it finishes doing that. Uh, and we'll see, uh, we'll see my new server disappear from the results. Um, if you look at the tenant ID column up there, this, uh, this search is running as an administrator, so it has access to all of the, all of the resources that are currently in Nova. Um, just as a demonstration of what Travis was mentioning earlier, the uh, access control, I'll run a search, exactly the same search um, as the demo user, and we see that we just get results back that, uh, that are owned by the current user. So we're able to limit results based on, on what role you have in the cloud. Um, the other thing uh, I want to talk about just briefly is the, the query language um, that we're using. If you're familiar with Elasticsearch, uh, this look, should, look, uh, should look familiar to you. Um, in my scenario, which is uh, similar to, to what Travis was talking about earlier, I'm, uh, I'm looking for 
uh, images that have MySQL preloaded on them. Uh, my naive query is, is just to, to run a search with MySQL image, and this is the kind of query that Travis's UI is sending off. Um, so this is kind of the back, the back end of that. Um, we see that I get a load of results back. Some of them look relevant. There's a glance image in there. Some of them maybe not so much. Uh, the, the meta def I maybe don't care about. So if I've got a bit more knowledge, um, I know that I'm looking for glance images. So I can, I can tell Searchlight, limit the results to glance images. And I also know that our administrator tags uh, images with the software that's running on them because uh, she's a nice guy. Um, so I can say that I'm looking for images with a tag matching MySQL. Um, this time I get many, much fewer results back. Um, the max score indicates that the results match my search terms much better. Um, and in this case, probably both those results are relevant to what I'm looking for. Um, and as Travis went into, you can get pretty complex if you know what you're doing. So in, in this case, we have a query where we're looking for, uh, for Nova servers. Um, we want to match all three of those terms in the must clause at the top. Um, and we want two, at least two of the, the terms in the should uh, section at the bottom. Um, Elasticsearch itself supports a, a huge number of, of operators and, uh, and Searchlight lets you use any of those as you want. The, the takeaway is that we're, we're exposing the Elasticsearch API as, uh, as well as we can um, whilst adding uh, access control um, and results filtering. If you, if you just want to send simple queries, you'll get decent results. Um, if you really know what you're doing, you can send very specific queries. Um, and, and really tune those results. Um, and as Travis mentioned, uh, Searchlight's been an open project from the beginning. It was in Glance very briefly. Now it's a, an OpenStack project. Um, and it's also extensible. So we're planning to provide support for as many OpenStack uh, resources as we can. But if you, have, if you had your own that you wanted to provide in a deployment, that would be uh, something you can do. Um, I'm going to hand over to Lakshmi now, who's going to talk in a little bit more detail about how that plugin system works. Um, after you. All right. Uh, thanks, Steve. Um, so Searchlight plugin. So uh, we have seen uh, Travis shown um, how easy it is actually to search across the resources um, and also the, how exactly it works. Um, so the heart of all this is not any specific code within Searchlight, but it's all done through the plugin. So anything specific to each service, it's all in the plugin. And Searchlight provides a platform wherein you have an uh, a simple uh, interface where you can interact with it. So let's look at the Searchlight plugins. Um, so it's based on the Steve Dore plugin. So if anybody have uh, already worked on the OpenStack, so it's pretty easy and straightforward. And even if it's not, it's, it's actually very easy to write a new plugin within Searchlight. So um, let's look at it. Um, so we have these are the different components of what you would write in a new plugin. So what we have right now as part of uh, Liberty is that uh, we have plugins for the Glance, Nova, and Designate. And in the uh, upcoming release, I know we are looking at several more plugins. But if there is something that's already not there in Searchlight, it's very easy to write. It just takes like a few hundred lines of code. Um, so the main part is the first is the Search API, the one that you saw on the UI. So that's the uh, simple interface. What you, a plugin would implement there is a pre-query and a post-query filter. Uh, we'll talk a little bit of about them. So the common thing in OpenStack across is the RBAC. So every service has its own unique RBAC. So what the pre-query filter does is that you can actually specify your own RBAC mechanism as a elastic search query. So before any query is executed, Searchlight will inject that particular RBAC mechanism so that exactly the same the service works. That's what you would get in a Searchlight output also. So the, the post-query filter, uh, what it does is um, maybe you want to actually strip off some data, make it look exactly the way your service would you know, send it back. Say, uh, take Glance, for example. It has property protections. So based on uh, who the user is, you want to actually remove some properties. So that's what you would write in a post-query filter. And we have seen the demo on the indexing. That's what uh, the Burke index handler does. That's what your initial indexing is. So what you would do is you define a mapping, similar to a database mapping. Uh, you would use an Elasticsearch uh, language, DSL, and specify what mapping that is specific to your service. And then uh, you would specify how do you fetch the data, and then index in Elasticsearch. And third is the notification handler. 
So once you have your data inside Elasticsearch, you want to keep it up to date. You want to keep it synchronized. As you've seen uh, Steve show, when you created a new Nova instance, you, know, you want to get the data inside the Elasticsearch. So what the notification handler does is it will listen to all the events uh, coming from different services. So the plugin handler or the plugin developer would write that, write that saying that these are the events I want to subscribe. And once you get those events, and uh, what you will do is uh, enrich it, right? Um, you know, map it according to your service, and then put it back in the Elasticsearch. So that's how you keep it up to date and synchronized. So let's uh, take a quick peek at what it takes to write a new plugin. Um, so we have a base uh, API that defines all the hooks. So just what we saw about you know, the, the input output filters, that what you see is the get RBAC fill filters. That's where you would actually give a sample Elasticsearch filter. We'll just take a look. Uh, I think once we're done with this, we'll take a look in the next slide. And the filter result method, that's where you would provide you know, what is the data that needs to be stripped off, or you know, maybe you want to add more based on how your service will look like. And the methods that you're looking at, the second one is the index handler methods. So here you're looking at a sample for the uh, OS glance image. That's what defines this plugin is for this particular type. A plugin can have more than one types. So glance can have image resource, or you could have a glance meta def. You can have multiple types that you can, a single plugin can support. So the key is the get mapping. This is where you'll specify the data that you have. So uh, for Nova instance, uh, you would say, OK, this is the name that I want to get in. And it has to be string or integer, or you can go really complex on it. But for most of the use cases, it actually ends up being 10 or 15 fields and very straightforward. Serialize, once you have the mapping defined, you want to get the data into your service. So you would read the data from your service. Maybe you do a REST API lookup or any other mechanism. So if it's glance, make a REST API lookup or get the data in, and then it convert into a format that you can put into the index as per the mapping. So you would do that in your serialize. So the third set of methods that we see here is the uh, notification handler. That's what specifies what events that you support. And then similarly, the, the way you did serialize, any new uh, events that come in, you would update it, you modify it, and then you put it back into the index so that it's up to sync. So let's take a quick look at it. So the pre-query RBAC injection, uh, this is what we are talking about. And this is the RBAC mechanism that should be similar to the way the service does. So take, for instance, Nova or Glance. Take the filter on the other side. Uh, that's where the query that you will give as part of that method, you're saying that I want to restrict it based on this particular project or this particular tenant so that if a non-admin comes in, he only sees all the images that he's supposed to see, not everything. So similar to the admin. And actually, this is a subset of what we have for Glance. It's just three lines or three sets of filters that we have for Glance. So it's pretty straightforward and simple. And going down, you look at the post query. Uh, so for some fields that you don't want to show, you can actually remove them. So for non-admin uh, users, you don't want to show some protected properties. So you uh, can strip it out on the next one. So the bulk index handler, get mapping. So this is similar to um, like a, even a DB API. All you specify is the type. And uh, if you want, you can say not analyzed or analyzed. But most of the time, it's simple and straightforward. And what you see is actually this is a subset of glance that we have right now in Liberty and working. And so these are the fields we just stripped off a little bit for the demo here. So serialize. So that's where you would use probably a Python client and go and get the data from your service, extract it. And for the initial load, you get all the images in this case. And then you index in the Elasticsearch. And I think most of the other services would be pretty much similar. Get the data, you know, serialize it, and you're done. So coming to the handler. So it says that I'm going to support all the events. You, know, you don't have to support everything that comes out of a notification. All that you care is maybe a create, update, and delete events. right? Um, so you get those events, you get the payload, and then you uh, serialize it back into the uh, Elasticsearch. It's similar to the uh, bulk handler, just that it is specific to this particular event, like uh, no instance creation or a glance image metadata update, something like that. So let's see. Um, how do you deploy Searchlight? So you can have a Searchlight service deployed in each region. And uh, let's say in your region, if you have Searchlight, so from the horizon or any other uh, client, you could use Searchlight. And then you get the data back, and you can display the results back. 
So what if you don't have Searchlight in that particular deployment? You could still go to the alternative route, uh, the way you do it right now. Go list all the Nova instances from Nova, or go list all the images from you know, Glance, and then see it. So we have an option. So if you don't have it, go to the alternate and existing route. Otherwise, you're great. You can use all the advanced capabilities that uh, Searchlight provides. So how do you scale it? Um, so there are two uh, main services within uh, Searchlight. The one is the API service that you see that actually gives you the search results back. The other is the data enrichment or the listener service. So you can deploy them separately. So you can have as many API services you want, uh, and uh, there is no context or anything like that. You could put it behind a load balancer, and you can, or even you can go directly against the Searchlight API service. If it's a small environment, you just want one of the API service. Now, for the listener services, um, they go using the Oslo messaging. They're based on that, so they listen to the events there. So you can have as many listener services as you want, separate from the API services. If you have a lot of events coming in, maybe you want to have a more listener services deployed in your environment. And even within each listener service, you can have more workers if you want to really you know, scale it up. And the Elastic cl Search cluster, you know, it, it could be even your existing Elastic Search that's already in your environment. You could just use it. The way Searchlight does it is it protects it by having its own index. So it only gives you results from what has been indexed through the Searchlight. It doesn't let you access anything else that's in the Elasticsearch already. So if you want to use an existing bond, yeah, go ahead and do it. So um, that brings it to get it back to the overview. And I'll give it back to Travis. OK. Is this on? There we go. <clears throat> so where are we now and where are we going? You saw what we have. In Searchlight, we, we have released it. We're calling it a technical preview release, although you can take it and deploy it. We're actually asking people to take it to play it and, and play with it, give us feedback. Give you all the things we just showed. Uh, we have plugins for Nova server instances, glance images, metadata definitions, uh, designate DNS domains, and records. In Liberty, we do want to have a shout out to everybody who helped contribute. In terms of reviews, those are uh, different people from different companies who helped contribute. For commits, we had uh, quite a few different people commit. So if anybody's here that helps, thank you very much. Uh, for Mitaka, our priorities are really about getting more content, number one. Um, we have various plugins that are going to be under development. Um, we would actually encourage anybody to go and build your own plugin for your own stuff. So if you're on an OpenStack service or even for your own private service, go ahead and build a plugin and try it out. Uh, we're looking at more cross-region and cross-project searching concepts. We actually have a design session on that tomorrow, so feel free to come to that. Uh, we're looking at doing zero downtime re-indexing. So if you have to completely reinitialize the entire thing, there's a, a mechanism that you can use with Elasticsearch that we're going to build on top of to make it just as easy as a command line uh, button push to have that happen with zero downtime whatsoever. Uh, we're looking more at the API versioning from Nova with their micro versioning, make that more configurable of which API version you get. And we want to work on improving the notification data from all the various services that we integrate with. So we do need your help. We'd love it if you can take Liberty or just take Master for a spin, try out the uh, Horizon plugin, uh, give us feedback, feature requests, uh, contribute, anything. We definitely will take any input or, or help that we can get. Uh, you can join us on Searchlight on the OpenStack dev mailing list, uh, OpenStack Searchlight on Freenode, of course, and then we have a weekly meeting and a, a wiki, so uh, please join in. So that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, mic? Do we have a mic? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, Thanks, sorry. Brad. Good presentation. I um, was wondering if you guys have any performance numbers at this point. For example, uh, doing a Nova list with Searchlight as compared to the APIs. Uh, yeah, that was actually, I, we did do some. So if I run all the way back here, the red there is Nova in terms of milliseconds of how long it took to do a wildcard search. The green is Searchlight response time on the exact same cloud. So you can see wildcard search, we were, I believe it was somewhere around 60 millisecond response time. And Nova was up closer to 450. 
And then for just doing a complete list all of what we had there, uh, there's your, your results. So that was the basic testing. We're gonna, we intend to do more with it. Um, so is that what you're looking for? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, sorry, I missed that previously. Thanks. No worries. Anything else? Hey, you were you're talking about the um, you know you process update notifications, right? Mm -hmm. When something changes, can you search on the historic data? We do not do time series data. Okay. It's current state only right current now. Current state. Okay. Time series, you're going to be looking more at like what Solometer, or maybe Manask is collecting. Yeah, I was thinking more like the can I find all the instances that were called something, right? Oh. Where you, you've made a name change or something like we that. We haven't done that right. concept. I mean, okay. there is ways that we could do that. Potentially, but that's not our primary okay. initial goal. Sorry, I'm late to the call. Uh, sorry, um, late to the uh, your presentation. But did you cover how are you going to uh, uh, divide it up into tenants? Can tenants use it? And if tenants can use it, how are you going to divide up which VMs belong to which tenants when you're searching? I. I think you asked about multi-tenancy. That's actually one of the primary value adds that Searchlight provides. Um, in addition to doing the indexing and having the common API, we do do the per-tenant searches. So like right now, um, in the demo video, and I'll be happy to show you afterwards since we're running out of time here, it, if you're logged in as an admin, by default, they say you're going to get what project you're on. You can say, give me all data if you're as an admin. If you're not, or you're just a specific tenant, you will get the data for the project that you're, that you're going for. And we do pre-filtering and post-filtering of the data to ensure. So it's not, this is definitely not intended as just an operator uh, service. It's actually intended to be used by both project users and admins. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much. We appreciate you coming.